good Thursday evening live from I'm in the basement tonight. I'm down in my my den. Uh, welcome to the David and Chuck show. And Chuck is in an undisclosed location that we uh, <laughs> we're still we still uh, worry about your location on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. Yeah, on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. Our, our man Deuce has, has got a lot of cash in there. He had he had laid some heavy money on uh, North Carolina last night. Did he? he? Money. Yeah, he he's got cash in his pocket. There you go. There you he's go. A basketball savant. He oh he is a basketball savant. He is. Well, he he's good to his mama, so he's he keeps his man card in my book. So even if he's not a basketball savant, he wears those goofy looking shoes. Well, yeah. I'm all in on some deuce. I am all in on some deuce. What's going on, Chuck? How you doing, bud? I'm doing well. Got a little bug, you know, that's going around. Yeah. Yep, got it too. Got yeah. it. That's why I'm down here. I'm trying to stay away from Janet. Yeah. You know, we and, uh, are, we we act like babies at our age when we get see it. Uh, Absolutely. Because uh, as soon as we're done, I'll say, Janet. <laughs> And hey, I, I said, I talked to Avery today. I said, can you give us an update? And she went, Papa, I'm going to be on the train. They're closing the park early tonight. I'm going to have to go ride a couple of rides. And I love you, but I don't have time to give you an update from Disney tonight. So so they're riding from one place to the next. It's out of my league. But uh, uh, what is going on, Chucky? Uh, we got a lot of football. Uh, well, we do have some activity in the uh, in baseball. The free yes, agents, we do. People that are signing. Matt's picked up a couple people. So, uh, Shohei has not made his final decision. Um, so we're we're waiting on that. And baseball activity, a lot of chatter about college football. So, and basketball starting to pick up steam. So yep. it's a perfect time of year. Yep. Now, now next Tuesday, I think I'm going to be at the basketball game, so we might be we might be off until Thursday. I think I'm going to go watch. Uh, a high, I have not really watched a high school basketball game in ten or twelve years, but uh, the athletic director over there. Uh, and yes, I'm wearing my 15 year old t shirt tonight, Mr. Chambers. You you and Jonathan can both leave me alone. Uh, but I am wearing it at home and the privacy of my own home. So leave me alone. That red? But, uh, it's well, it's faded. This thing is, it's like 15 years old. And since I've lost that weight, it's like four sizes too big. Every, so, everybody so, over on the other side, kind of, uh, no, nah, they don't care. But, uh, but anyway, uh, a lot, of, a lot of things going on. But before we start breaking down, Chuck, and talking about the bowl games or, or the playoffs or any of that stuff, uh, can I tell you that I, I'm – the state – you know, we talk about it all the time. But like this week, the state of college athletics, and in, in right now in particular football, it, it, it disgusts me. It, it literally disgusts me. Uh, you might agree, you might disagree, but uh, man, you know, Michigan. I'm just using teams that I've just read some headlines about. Michigan State lost all three scholarship quarterbacks within a few hours because right. they're all in the transfer portal. The kid from Duke uh, left Duke and went from Duke to Texas A&M, but he went back to play with his head coach, and I get it. And, and I'm sure they wrote him a couple of million, $3 million check. I get it. But, but again, you know, an education from Duke. Nobody, I, don't, I don't hear that anymore. Uh, the the uh, uh, Max uh, Johnson's now on his third school. as he, he went from LSU to Texas A&M, and now he's going to Carolina. I don't think that's a good move for him, but that's just me. Uh, and, it, you know, just it's it's crazy. The kids that played at Clemson that went to Oregon State this year that was the, the one of the top two guys coming out of high school that went and transferred from Clemson to Oregon State. He's leaving Oregon State after six or seven months now. Uh, uh, all these decommitments from Colorado, 
uh, these, the, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the transfer portal with, with Sanders, but his coaches are running like fleas, uh, like flies, man. They're getting away from him. The, 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 uh, the recruits are decommitting from him. I mean, I just, the state of college football is it, it, just, I, I can't, I can't stand it. My comment. Okay. I agree with you. I agree. D one. I don't agree. Uh, it, it's not a problem in D two. Uh, although, you know, uh, my guy up at Ferris state, my former teammate at Elma college, who's the head coach at Ferris state had to set out that play up. You will. <coughs> Excuse me, that playoff You're good. Game, that playoff game because his kid smoked cigars after the victory, after winning the national championship. What are we doing here? Division three seems to be just, you know, we don't have that problem. And so, but I've always been a D3 because I was a D3 player. Yes, I'm listening. Loved, and you know that. Chad Upton knows that. I mean, I would want to tell everybody about the love affair I have with division three. And so you have people that are going to class, but I say this, the coaches and administrators and uh, at the schools, along with the NCAA, you asked for this, you asked for this, you know, we had years ago where they got, they could get 5% of their roster could be guys who couldn't even spell their name. A good football player, but they couldn't spell their name as long as you had help. Then it went to ten percent, then fifteen percent. Now they just opened it up. Yeah, and and you know, Chuck. Again, I go back and 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 I, I'm, I guess this is a question that would we, for us to talk about and a statement at the same time. You know, we talked about I've talked about Dabo and 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 his reluctance to do work in the transfer portal and his and his reluctance to get involved in all the money. And his program has suffered because of that. And then yesterday, uh, uh, Rule at Nebraska, did you read? I'm sure you read the same thing I read, where he said, Look, man, I want to build this program the way it's supposed to be built. I want, I want to go get my kids. I want, I want to, 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 to uh, uh, develop our kids and keep kids in our program. But is that really, really, really? something that, that is a, that can be a reality. Can the Dabos and the rules compete any longer with that state of mind in, in uh, going forward? On, on occasion, they could. Can they be a premier elite program? I don't think so. Um, I'll take Indiana, for example, losing Tom Allen, who the, the players loved him in. And two years ago, he went heavy into the transfer portal, which means he was very little and very light on high school kids. And then he did it again. He was very light the last two years on high school kids. He didn't recruit high school kids. He went to the portal. Now he leaves in Indiana just a flush of of Hoosiers running into the transfer portal that they came in. Now either they're going to drop down or they're going to have to sit out a year. And some of them may be players that came in with them three years ago or four years, I noticed there's a lot of guys in transfer portal that have a graduate in one year. So what the college coaches have done is forget the high school kids. I mean, that's a reality. They have forgot the high school. And if, if you go to a D one program, you better expect to be on the bench, low on the depth chart, for at least three years, if not four years, because they're going, as long as this transfer portal's here, they're going to keep going out there and getting answers now. They'll look at Joey Smith, quarterback Joey Smith, and say, Joey's not ready right now. But, you know, we go get this guy for one year, and then it's like at Texas, yours, everybody thought yours was going to go NFL. He, he threw a curveball. Everybody says, I'm staying. Yeah. And Arch Manning, of all people, said, adios, I'm gone. So you, it, it's a mess, but they created it. NIL, transfer portal, and n- no academics on D1. None. Yeah. I didn't. You didn't. They created it. It's, 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 it's just, to me, it's, it's the, look, I had the advantage of, seeing it 
at the biggest of the big from the inside with my kid. You know what I'm saying? And it was dirty back then. It was nasty. It was dirty. And it was, it's cut, it was cutthroat, but there were rules and regulations. Did everybody follow them? No, but there were rules and regulations. This situation that, that, that college athletics, and I'm talking right now more about football than anything else is there are no rules. There are no regulations. You know, it's, it's just, it's really, to me, it's really sad. It's really, really sad because, uh, You know, growing up, the first team that I ever rooted for, and and I remember now, you know, we'll show our age here. When when ABC had the game, you know what I'm saying? ABC had the game every week. And when I was young, Nebraska, Jerry Taggy, Johnny Rogers, those guys, they, they they were awesome. Do you remember the head coach at Nebraska? The, yeah, Devaney. You know where he graduated from? Yes, I do. I do. He's 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 a he's an alum with you at yeah. Alma. Oh, I mean, he's older than me, but he's an alum. Yeah. But 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 I say that to say that when I used to think about when you said Nebraska football, I I didn't think about the coach. My first thought was Jerry Taggy or Johnny Rogers. Or, or, you know, to a, you know, to a lesser extent for me, because I never have been. But when you when you said Ohio State football in your my age, the first thing you were you thought about was Woody. But then, what's the next thing you think about? Griffin. Yeah. That that's really sad that these kids. And I get I get it. Look, I'm not stupid because if Jonathan it had been you know if. If I had more self control and Jonathan was younger, I would look at him now and I would go, "Hey, man, they're going to write you a four or five million dollar check, bud. Go do your thing." Right. I mean, I, I get that, but right. I don't. But we should not be in the state that we're in. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, I mean, tell me what what do you think about? I don't don't you know don't 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 tell me about you know that it's happening. Tell me what Chuck thinks about this situation. Truly. Well, I don't, and don't talk about D2 and don't talk about D3 because that's a different thing. Talk about what we're seeing right now. I'm disgusted by it. I, I grew up a Michigan fan, didn't go there, went to Elma College, but I, I got to a point where I was disgusted by everything. And on the Division One level, we talked years ago, okay, about this basketball uh, bonus program for all these high school kids and they were getting all these coaches were going to get in trouble they were going to be investigated what happened to that david it dried up when they put in nil what why are you going to go investigate somebody when they can legitimately now get the money that's like why do that yeah again i'm disgusted by the criminal element the unethical element but this is college football, and what perturbed me, what I am just angry about most of all is they're not going to class, they're not going to the library, they're not taking tests, they're not learning to critically think. They are being, uh, they are being, they are kept in the plantation for a lack of a better word. So you want me to tell you what I think? Because these guys right now. The intensity of watching D1 football is gone. The days when you, we now can't, we can't strike somebody hard. We can't, you know, if you hit him, it's targeting and he's removed from the game. So, I mean, they're ruining the game, Division One. That's what it is. So, basketball for years, for decades, cheated. Handed kids money, paid kids. That's how they recruited. Um, and what happens to them, you know, it's all dried up and they can't get any money. And so they become criminals. You got the football is worse. You, you, I sent you that story about Jimbo and the money they spent to get the highest ranked class. And it's into $60 million. And it ended up in him firing and no bowl. It's yeah. 
what happens here. You can go on and on, but no classes. I don't like that. No, uh, you know, you got to work hard. You stay on a depth chart. You know, I get one. I get one transfer. You know, you transfer, but I like the fact that if you're going to transfer, that's it. I mean, they're trying to set that up, but you let too many people go two and three times transferring. You know, it's what Jonathan said that day. He said, the barn doors opened, both barn doors are open, and you're not going to be able to close it anymore. You can't close it. And, and, and Devin, yeah, I, I did read today that the, that the quarterback at NC State is in the portal now. Right. Now, what the hell's that? I mean, again, well, it's a, it's got to be a money thing. Well, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, it could be. Yeah, I, you, you come with an astute point of view here. But, you know, this kid started second on the depth chart. Armstrong was the first. Armstrong had trouble. And they sat him down and they put this kid in and it got worse. But Armstrong stayed positive and was a leader of that team while he was sitting the bench. And he, when he got back in, he, he had the team. The team had his back. And we saw what NC State did when that happens. But Armstrong is, I think he's done on the graduation. So the kid at, looking at it going, well, they're recruiting another hot shot. Well, you were supposed to be a hot shot back in there. Compete for the job. So they're well, just I think, I think, again, you just used a word, Chuck, that, that, that just doesn't work I- anymore. Compete. Right. Compete. It, I'm not going to compete. You're going to give it to me or I'm going to leave. That's, David – that is the reason why the college coaches know these kids can't and won't compete. That's why they go to the transfer portal. And you know what? If they get a, a, a veteran season quarterback out of this, that's as equal or a little bit better than the guys that they got there. Hey, guess what? You know, they got a quarterback and they'll let you roll. And because again, you know, I, I go back and in my uh, the experience that I know about is 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 the 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 uh, you know the quarterback room in Knoxville when 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 Jonathan was there, they and you had two guys that were in that quarterback room that had nowhere to go, they were there, and that you know and and. What were they going to do? You know, they, they weren't buddies. They're not buddies. They'll never be buddies to this day, all these years later. But they had to stay and try to make the best of it. And you had to compete. At least you got to compete as long as they let you compete. And and later on in life, what's going to happen when, when the guy comes in, in the boardroom or in the meeting room or at the job and goes, hey, you know, we're, you got to do this, this, and this. What are they going to do? Run out the door? You know, I, I, it's bigger sometimes than just some, you know, a half a million dollar check or whatever they're getting or a myth. You know, some sometimes you just got to plant your flag in the dirt and say, man, I, I, I've got to compete. And I'm going to man up. And if I don't win it, I, it's okay. I'm going to keep fighting until I can. Well, I, that's a an admirable um, philosophy. <laughs> But it yeah, doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Right. No, and, no. and I have this question to ask you. Are the colleges and the athletic programs making money or losing money? You know, that's a heck of a question. They're, listen, ESPN, I, I guess the answer to that I've got to do, ESPN dictates now everything. As far, listen, I'm just, right now I'm just talking about football. So, so people are making money now. Does Disney make money off of it? I don't know, but I know that the people that they're writing the checks to are making the money. The Southeastern Conference, I guess, the only thing that's got more money than the SEC is going to probably be the NFL. Okay, am I so? So, somebody's making big, 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 big dollars, but they're. Uh, I'm, what I'm looking at is making money is it's almost like a business. If you're if you're 
spending out of control and you're taking in 10 million and you're spending 10 million, you're not making money. Correct. Okay. Okay. So what was the reason why we paid these college coaches, these big salaries? They, what we were told they're making hand over fist, big money. If they want to coach, start with them and put to start with the, the head coaches and the coaching staffs and start bringing down because your professors are getting a hundred to $200,000 to be professors. Your head coaches who are not making money at most of these programs on the D1 level are making are uh, making four, five, seven, eleven, twelve million dollars. We're out of control. And every facet of D1 college football, we're out of control. We our collective mind. Yeah, and I agree with that. And I go back today when I talked about the guy that's taking the head job at Indiana. And, and that's fine and dandy, but he, he's going to make some money here. Okay. But he is not going to compete with Ohio state and he is not going to compete with Michigan. And you can take that to the bank and in four or five years, he'll be somewhere else when they fire him, but he'll make his money in the meantime. Right. And that's all. And that's the truth. Right. And, 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 is he going to fill up the stadium in Bloomington, Indiana? I, I don't, I, I don't probably not. Probably not. You know, if it's a basketball game, yes, but, but probably not. And, uh, you know, when you step into those jobs, that's a different animal. When you come, you know, you know, when I went to, uh, well, that's another story. Somebody had a, uh, David, uh, Devin, uh, ask us about our thoughts on Jimbo's buyout. Hey, my thoughts before I, before I throw it to Chuck are real simple. They gave him the contract. He and his agent read it and all three and all both parties signed it. I don't begrudge Jimbo. If you, if you're going to pay me that money, I'm going to take it. And if they were silly enough not to attach anything to it, or especially the other side where, where re, if we fire you, you're going to get a hundred percent, regardless if you get another job somewhere else, you better get a better lawyer. You, you need to negotiate better. You know, I mean, that's my thoughts on Jimbo's buyout. Chuck. Uh, a man puts a contract in front of me and says that I have a $96 million buyout if they uh, fire me because I don't win enough. I'm going to put my name on that. I have security. And if you want to fire me, I don't care. I know, you know, it's hard for coaches. I've watched Jimbo the last two years on the sidelines, and he gives you this I don't care attitude. Fire me. He wants to become a massive multi-millionaire. But I'll tell you who I fought. I don't fought Jimbo. I don't fought the agent. I fought the ADs. Mm -hmm. The athletic directors who are making these deals, they need to start losing their job because you're, you, are, you have lost your collective mind in running a, uh, a entity of your university or college and you get so much money, and you, where are you getting the money? Where are you getting that money? Somebody tell me that. It doesn't grow on trees, as my mom used to say. Where are you getting well, the money? The money's coming from the TV. Money's coming from TV and boosters. Yep. All right. Case in point, they falsified Hartson having a se illicit sexual uh, relationship at Auburn so they can fire him and hire Hugh Freeze. Uh, I'm listening. So this is AD. This is AD stuff. You take a guy, and these coaches are are like, you can get rid of me anytime you want, no problem. Um, I'm going to sign as big as I can a uh, buyout. You know, so that's the way I'm going to roll here. But we have collectively lost our mind on Division One athletics. Yeah, there's it's it's 
you know, uh, again, a, a prime example, and I talked about it the other night, Chuck, is the LSU women's basketball program. Right. And 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 that young lady's coming back to, to play tonight. And it's one of the top two stories on the ESPN headline thing. Well, well basically, who can, that's, well, it's it, it's it's we're out of control. So anyhow, uh, let me make sure I got somebody that wants to come on with us to start talking about playoffs. Playoffs. Uh, let, let me let me make sure this sucker's ready. Yeah, uh, but uh, before we leave this subject, and I know that you 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 think it stops. At, at the, the, the division one level. And that's where I disagree uh, because we're go, we're going to start it, the trickle down stuff is, is taking effect. And uh, I think we're going to lose some guys here. Pretty darn cool. We're going to lose some schools uh, starting in, in D three, moving up to D two. And, and uh, you know, we're going to all the junior college, I think junior college football, uh, will be a thing of the past within five or six years. And I think that's how quick it's going to happen. But that's just, you know, that's just kind of my thought. But uh, anyway, let's, 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 let, let me get to the playoff stuff here. Schedules for Saturday. And I guess we need to start before we, it, with, it, we'll, let's talk Division Three football before our guest comes on. All right. All right. Tell me what's happening up in Michigan. And hey, listen, folks, this is really cool stuff because it's pure and it's football. Well, it's electric up there. And they're, uh, Elma College is in a place they've never been before. They've never been to the third round. Last year, they went never been to, never won a first round game, did that, lost in the second round. First time they were in second round. Won a first round this year, won a first round or second round game at Mount Union, the most prolific Division Three program in the last probably 32, 33 years because they made the national championship game 19 times and won 13 of them. So Mount, Mount Union just got stunned. They shocked, Elma shocked the world. So the infinite wisdom of Division Three administration was – we're going to play this home game at Elma. Cortland State out of New York, Cortland, New York, is going to play um, in in Elma. Uh, kickoff is at noon, and it is going to be an electric atmosphere. There's ways you can watch it on television. Um, we have people down here from Elma College, North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, that, and Arkansas that are uh, – getting ready to, if that happens, we are all going up there on De Friday, December 15th. We have two games. Now, the, we're playing the uh, Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl up in Salem, Virginia. The If that happens, the people in the quarterfinals in our bracket, the four teams, have never played in the national championship. So somebody is going to play their first ever national championship. And I watched the, you know, I watched the game and I, you know, pit my stomach the whole game. I'm like, God, we got so close until the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden magic happened. And you score 24, four fourth quarter points to win 24, 20. Oh my, I was like stunned. And it was like big plays and, and Mount union was trying to figure out what is hitting them. And, so, I mean, it, it's a big event up in Michigan. Uh, it is true, the most pristine situation because you've got, you know, kids right now getting ready for December finals, and they're going to play in the playoffs and everything. So I'm, I'm quite excited about this, about my alma mater. That's awesome, right? I mean, right. that's a big deal. Right. That's a big, big deal. And, and uh, uh, kilts up. Kilts up. But, you know, I told you Saturday when I sent that text, it was all over till I said, boys, it's time to, you got to take, you know, you, you know what I said. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were just trying to pacify me. And I said, to nope. him, boom, boom. 
I'm like, what's up, babe? So, so, what's up, Jonathan? What's up? Do you know Mr. Febernitz? I have heard of him through the I grapevine. Oh, we can hardly hear you. I prefer to but be I called. I heard of him through the grapevine. <clears throat> Call me 84, 8. What, eight, eight? Was my, I gave, 8 was my baseball number. But I gave you being called 8, but I want to be called Mr. 84. Where's Mr. <laughs> 8? Yeah, ain't right. Oh, my goodness. What All right. See, what do you see Saturday, Jonathan? I'm sorry? All right. Let's, let, well, let, let's start the first. Let's start. Let's start here. Friday night, December 1st, tomorrow night, Oregon, Washington. Oh, it's tomorrow? 8 yeah. o'clock kickoff. First 8 o'clock kickoff tomorrow night, Oregon, Washington. And is Oregon not like a 7? Is John Taylor telling us there's like a 7? No, seven they're, no they're like a they're an, um, they were like a nine and a half point favorite at one point. Um, Who, right, what do you got? I don't. And again, I don't want to talk point spread. I want to talk winners and losers. I know. I know. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying, like that. They apparently are favoring. I'm pull up on my phone. Oregon heavily, though. What do you got, Chuck? Washington. That point spread tells me I'm jumping on Washington. I know you don't want to talk, but I mean, no, no, I'm talking about just winning and losing too. Right. And, and I still these, got the, these teams are equal. They and they played before, and Washington beat them. You and, think they're equal? Yeah, I see this. I'm I'm saying Washington, but I something tells me Oregon is just a better football team right now. Could happen. <sighs> I'm riding with them. I've stuck with them all year. I'm going. I'm going. You dub, baby. Let's go. Dub. And then here's the thing. Oh. And here's the thing, Chuck. I need to I need to read this to you. Okay. It's 701. We went on the air at 7 o'clock. It's 701. I'm losing to Riley while playing Clue. And Chuck <laughs> isn't dancing to the entrance music. This night isn't turning out great. However, it is my 10-year anniversary with Andrea. So first of all, happy anniversary, Andrea. You you are a great woman to put up with that crazy man up there. Yeah, yeah. So, but 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 anyway, Chuck, you quit dancing to the to the opening theme, and everybody's just you you've messed everyone up. I got it. Um, get it down. Okay, so but real quick, so back to that. Oregon is a ten point favorite. That's a two score favorite. That's a ballsy move by Vegas. Um. I'll but either way, I still got Washington. I, I'm still taking Washington. Everybody, the the, the uh, majority, the uh, money, that's the professionals out there are all jumping on Oregon. I, I hate that going with the the crowd, so to speak. So yeah, I, I just I just think or, or Washington. I like the team. Nobody. <laughs> You know, uh, Washington has gotten here by winning other games, and they already beat Oregon. And I could be dead wrong, but I think or Washington wins, and I and I'm rooting for Washington. Yes, go Huskies! I can't because after this season, we're not ever going to say that again. You know, John Taylor, hear hear me. We're not going to say that any longer. We love you, but well, that's enough. Ohio is going to drop down about. Five places in Washington, USC, UCLA, and Oregon are going to take Ohio spot up there with Michigan. So and and uh, Penn State. So. <laughs> you you've you've made a lot of people angry in the last ten seconds. I know a guy, a guy Bob. He's begging me to stop, but that's okay. Yeah. All right. Saturday noon kickoff. Oklahoma State, Texas. I got Texas. I don't know that it'll be a blowout, but I've got Texas. I got I got the Longhorns too. Yeah, I got Texas, but n nobody wants to watch that game. I mean, it's supposed to be championship weekend, and this is where hey, you play your schedule. I get it, but this is 
<laughs> a championship game like that against a team that's got three losses is why I still don't respect Texas about getting in the playoff. Come um, on, man. And well, no, but and we can we'll talk about all the games. But and I'm not a big Kurt Herb Street fan. No. But I do think he said it really well the other night. He said, regardless, and he goes, this is, and he was on a podcast, so he was not being, like, politically correct. He goes, this is going to piss a lot of people off. But the reality is the committee's sole job is to pick the best four teams. It doesn't matter about the ranking at this point. That's why Florida State should not be in. He goes, call it like it is. They're not one of the best four teams without their quarterback. That's that's the br- brutality of it. So that's that's why, like to me, seeing Texas play a three-loss Oklahoma State is not. It's not in their favor. They should they should win this game handily. They're a fifteen and a half point favorite in a conference championship game. A fifteen, almost a three-score favorite. That to me that doesn't help their case, and I'm I'm one of the top four, regardless of winning this weekend. Chucky? Um, I think Texas uh, went uh, comfortably. Um, my daughter-in-law married to Mike, my son, who played football at App State, played volleyball at University of Texas. So I, you know, hook him, Longhorn. Um, but I, I think anybody that's sitting at five and, and lower, five, six, seven, and eight, they're, they're done. They're not no. in. Well, I'll just. Well, there, there's only one. To me, there's only one that has a legitimate chance. That's Alabama. Yes. But it's just they beat because, Georgia. They beat Georgia. They will jump from eight to four. If you possibly think possibly three. If you think Alabama uh, will win that game, I was on I don't. that two weeks. I don't. But I'm just saying, if they did, if they win, they're jumping in. That's just the reality. You're not going to leave a, an SEC champion out with the past. 17 years, right? it's been at least – it's over 50% have been SEC champions. Different rosters, different teams, different coaches. Everything's different than it was, you know, back from 2007, 8, 9, 10. I've gotten a bunch except, of – Well, except, except one man. Uh, the GOAT. Nick Saban. That's, okay. that's, so, that is the – that's the oh, – hey, what anybody God. thinks, that is the ace of spades – when it comes to college football, meaning he's a one-loss SEC champion, he's in. It's just what it is, whether we like it or not. Right. Well, Again, hold on. You said it's the, the best four teams. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Georgia, Georgia, Alabama. I've got Georgia in a in a really good football game, but I've got Georgia. <laughs> I've got Georgia winning too. I'm just going if Alabama wins, they're in. I've been giving all the – now, John Truett, Bama boy, our friend, has been sending me stuff all week long, and he just sent me a text before you just picked Georgia. He said, Jonathan Crompton is so smart. He's probably sitting there passed out on the floor now. You just picked Georgia. But because to pick Georgia, I'm picking Bama. I'm going to go back to where I originally thought, and I just – I think Alabama's the team that is the one team that can play with um, with Georgia, and I I'm going to roll with the roll tide on this one. And and the only reason I'm going Georgia <clears throat> is not because they've won the past two or anything like that. Right. They're playing 45 minutes away from home. This is a home game for Georgia, regardless of the ticket sales being 50 50, all that crap it doesn't right. matter. This is a home game for Georgia. But I, I do think whoever has the ball last will win. If you take That's the where, total you know. Georgia players, particularly on the defensive front, offense, and not on the offensive line so much, but their defensive front, the linebackers and, and D linemen and edge rushers, if you take the minutes, they total up only nine games. They rotate so much that they got fresh people that they can bring in to everything. But I get that. And <laughs> In it because you're going to take Alabama. Um, now, can I ask a question? Back to this. 
About what? Well, if Alabama does win, and if I'm right, which I'm usually right all the time. 60% of the time it works 100% oh. of the time. <laughs> what movie is that from? I can't remember. That's so um, funny. Um, does Alabama, you said Alabama wins, they get in? Yeah, they have to. What happens to Georgia? They're in, and here's why. I'm going to contradict myself from what I said last week. I think Kerr Herbstreet is right in the sense of, and this he's also kind of proven the point that I was saying, that conference championship games don't mean a gush darn thing anymore because their, their sole job is to pick the best four teams, not conference champions, best four teams. Does that make sense? That So to me, if you're in the top eight, you have a legitimate chance to be in, especially because teams are going to play each other. So to me, if Alabama wins, I think, and I could be wrong, I think they bump Alabama to two and Georgia to four, and Georgia stays in. And Michigan stay at one, Alabama two, Pac-12 champion three, Georgia four. That's my opinion. Something – Five spots from the eight spots are thing and barely is done, but it can be done. But it can if, 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 and it will, if and they it, win, if they win, it will be done because they're one loss SEC champion beating the number one team in the country with a 45 and one record in the past 46 games or whatever. Here's it here's here's where the human element comes in. Uh <clears throat> The, today, I just I'm just reading this. Where today, and uh, Saban goes, well, not having an SEC team in the college football playoffs is disrespect. Well, it is. So and the only so, and the, so and the, basically, the reality is you he's can't put you them can't on have notice. a twelve and one. He's put them on notice. Yeah, you can't have two twelve and one SEC teams and not put one of them in. And this uh, is what it is. Yeah, I get that, but Maybe. that's but. This is where Kurt Herbstreit, I, do, I don't agree with him much. I promise. He's right in the sense of he goes, guys, their job is not to take conference champions. Their job is to take the best four teams. That's just what it is. And that's where Ohio State gets hurt because Ohio State is one of the best four teams. Let's just call it like it is. They're not. If you're going by the, if you're going by the best four teams, They're not. Ohio, State, no, Ohio State would be left out, meaning it would be Georgia, Michigan, in no particular order, Georgia, Michigan, Washington, and Bama. Those are the best four teams in the country. So, uh, with Ohio, uh, they're eleven and one, and 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 um, a twelve and one Alabama or a thirteen and zero Georgia has a more impressive resume than a team that had a week off and didn't play. Out of sight. No, not see. I see. I'm. I'm gonna. It hurts me to say this. I will disagree with that for the fact of their one loss is against the number one or number two, depending on who you want to talk to, team in the country, in their same division of their conference. Right. Well, in Michigan, it would have been the same thing for Michigan if Ohio State would have won. You can't that if their only loss is by what four points? Was it was it four? I think it was um, thirty twenty six or something like that. Well, thirty twenty four. Okay, okay. Oh, so six. Okay, so 30 24. That's right. To the number one or number two team in the country. Not that I want. No, no, no. I'm just saying, but like a one score ball game to the number one slash number two team that's in the same division of your same conference. This is where, if they don't do the right thing, this is why I've been saying for a long time, we're just going to, the NCAA is going to be completely imploded and it is going to be a line drawn down the middle and it's going to be an it's going to be the nfl so you're going to have an eastern division and a western division and you're going to have it is like it is what it is and have playoff and playoff and the winners meet each other because otherwise it's doing a, a disservice to these teams that are going if you go 11 and one and your only loss is to the two number two team in the country and you can't and you don't have a chance to get in that's absurd let that, me that's just that's completely absurd. Let me ask you a question. Let me propose something to you. I'm not so clear cut that you know, with sitting out at eight and moving up four, Alabama, if they win, is 
Could Alabama, throwing this out, could Alabama be ranked four? And because Georgia lost, put Georgia two. All right, so, all right, boss, yes, here's, I'm going to, I'm not, I, I, you could possibly, but right, so here's your question. Take everything aside. There you go. I want both y'all's answers. Who are the best four teams in the country? Right don't take now. Anything, don't, no, no, don't take any record. Don't take any conference championship game appearance into a play. Who are the best four teams that you think? Georgia, Michigan, Oregon, Texas. Say it. Not a chance. Okay. Chuck? I ha Just on the spur, I, I, I got to thinking after he said Georgia and Michigan, and I'm sitting here thinking, okay, um, I, I I don't think much of the Big Ten this year as far as a conference. So I'm no, not no, just take the teams. Don't worry about any of that. Okay. Michigan, um, Georgia, Bama. And if Bama's in it, Texas has got to be in it. No, no, that's not what I'm getting at. The best four teams. Not about who's played each other, just best four teams. Well, I, I don't I can't come up with a four because I'm I'm on the spot, but I can get you three. I can get you because this because this is what Kurt Herb Street was saying. It ain't the committee's job to go where they won their conference. It's the committee's job to say who are the best four teams. Best four teams, and that's the beauty is everybody's best four teams are gonna be different. Well, they how are. do you how do you take an undefeated now, just look how do you go to a Florida state and you're undefeated and you don't get in? It, it how doesn't do you go, it, because How you're not you the go to a Washington. I'm, I'm, I'm telling that's you, undefeated, and say you can't get in. You just did. They're in my top four. You did it. You said they weren't in your top four. They're in my top four. Do you see what I'm saying? And because it goes back to, like he said, I'm sorry. The Travis kid getting hurt at Florida State. They're not the best yeah, four teams now. No, they're not one of the best four teams uh, now. That's just what it is. They moved Florida State up. One, like the game I, gonna, after. I get that, but I'm just telling you, I'm going off of what they're supposed to do. If you read their bylaws, but, they're supposed to do the best four teams. And if you look at it, Florida State without it, without their Heisman candidate quarterback, is not one of the best four teams. Well, that they're not. That's, that's not a slight on them. They're still probably number six or seven, but not number four. Oh, Johnson, like my on. top four are Georgia, Michigan, Bama. Washington, in no particular order. But that committee's going to do what they want to do to come to their four best teams. Yes, but see, they're going to go against what they're supposed to do. They were supposed to. And here's, yes, they will. They, and here's, they've said they, they've already said they would with the committee chairman talking about, well, conference championship plays a role now. Well, if you look what they used to do, Ohio State won the national championship with not playing in the Big Ten championship game because they were one of the best four teams. If that's when they were picking the best four teams, now right now they're not because they know it's the last year doing it, and they're under they're under such like microscope because they're going oh we can't get this wrong because there's 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 at least six teams deserving. Well, I know four, and I know in my in my belief system is that they've given you already one through four. If they hold chalk and win, they're in. I, I disagree. Well, here, I do. Here's Washington. Here's, no, Michigan. well, Washington did, Washington is one of my top four regardless. Right. They are. Right. Michigan, obviously. Georgia, obviously. Bama, it hurts me to say it, but yes. Oh. Texas is not a top four to me. They're just not. Um, Florida State, if Travis is not hurt, they're number two to me. Nice. You know, they, uh, they're like six or seven to me now. Now, listen, listen to this is that Washington or not Washington, but the Pac-12's best defense is ranked 35th overall. OK, so I don't see I, I get the best team argument, but what they're telling me, the committee, is if they hold chalk, we're not moving anybody out. If they all win on Saturday and Friday night, Washington, Georgia, Michigan, and Florida State, they're in. 
I think I, I do. I, I I think they would put Texas before Florida State. I don't like that, but I think they would. I don't think they move anybody out if they if, the if they full- because if Georgia Georgia's Georgia's to me in regardless Michigan's in well if, unless they lose to Iowa which I don't think they will another twenty three point favorite is in if Washington wins obviously they're in they're one of the top four teams they have been all year if Oregon beats them now you got a, now you got a conversation of going is Oregon in or is Washington in once again to me it goes the best four teams. So I think the winner of that one would get the the edge, regardless. Oh, the thing that Florida State, I'm t- what I'm getting at is if they all win, Florida State, or all win but one, we'll say it that way. Florida okay. State's going to be the team that gets jumped. John Johnson, you're on this committee, and I'm going to give you the four teams if they win Friday and Saturday, if Georgia wins, if yep. Michigan, if Washington wins, and if Florida okay. State. Tell me your your top four in the playoffs. I just did. Georgia, Michigan, Washington, Texas. They're going to move Texas yes. out with one I'll bump, loss. I'll bump Florida. I'm going to bump Florida State for Texas, and it comes back to it. One of the best four teams. Louisville just got beat by a very very subpar Kentucky team. Right. Louisville is not a great ACC champion opponent for Florida State. It doesn't help their case. Does that make sense? If yeah. they're if we're gonna if we're gonna make them play conference championship week, and half the teams don't play and half teams do play, then by God, it better be a worthy opponent or it can hurt you. Is the way I look at it. But and, and I and the reason the reason I say that is a team like an Ohio State. There's a reason why this committee put those four in those four spots, and they're undefeated. They will this. They will have thirteen and zero top four. No, no, in conference champions. <coughs> I'll me. go ahead and say it. If 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 everybody wins, right, in the top six or five, because what or who's five? No, sorry, six, or five. five. If te- I'm, if Texas wins, okay, then Florida State gets bumped and is the 2003 Auburn. Uh, Oregon is five. They'll lose if you said top four. Yeah. Ohio State. So they've got them right there. So Ohio State is not playing. So they're not. Ohio, watch this. I'm just saying, Ohio, to me, Ohio State or Texas then would jump Florida State. And Florida State would be the 2003 Auburn team that should have won the national championship game but didn't undefeated and think, played in the Sugar Bowl. I think Texas, if they win with a, one, a 12-1 record, will end up five. Ohio State will stay at six. If Georgia wins, Alabama will drop to 10. But yeah, I'm saying if the top, I'm saying if if the top four win, right? Okay, it means Oregon loses. If if Texas wins, Texas and or Ohio State, in my opinion, will jump Florida State, and Florida State will be the 2003 Auburn team that should have went to the national championship game but didn't because their quarterback got hurt. I understand what you're saying, the record and this and this, but that's not the we're looking at best four teams. They're not going to go. They're not going to say we're going to put a third string quarterback in the playoffs and get a complete blowout to uh, Georgia. They did that with TCU, the backup quarterback who played, although he played all year. Yeah, but he was also a Heisman backup. candidate. He was also a Heisman candidate, and he was and, and he was a three year starter before that year. So that is that is right. not a case here. He started as they a were, freshman, sophomore, junior, came one, back from a heart surgery. Uh, you're wrong. No, no. See that case, Chuck. He was a three-year starter, had heart surgery, won his job back, played all year. Was in was in New York for the Heisman. Th- right. This kid is not. This kid started two games in his career, got right. hurt, had to put the third string in. Right. That's going to be a bloodbath against Georgia with a <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a second or third string quarterback with a total combined two starts. At least Max Duggan had three or a four years starting. Hold, hold on, hold on a minute. Uh, I, no, you're wrong. They're they're not going to leave. We'll, we'll see. see. Now, no. let because me ask the, you if because if they don't, here's okay. why. Here's well, why I say if I'm I'm just telling you if they don't, and then Florida State gets beat by forty, the committee has completely lost every bit of credibility they've ever had. Well, they never they had will. any to begin with. Also so, true. Also let me true. ask. You, all right, let me ask you a question. 
you know, you on a you do uh, Tennessee football on a, every Saturday for the last few years, and you continue mm-hmm. to do it this year. And I was a blitz. Saturday. I was whatever game I was. I really was just. I don't know. I was just sitting upstairs zoned out. I had the TV on. Really don't care. And then all of a sudden, I get this thing. It goes, "Hey man, he's within two touchdowns of, of a record." And I'm going, "I don't know what you're talking about." And then 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 Chuck sends a text. Or I think it was Chuck and goes, uh, "He tied he tied the record for most touchdowns for a Tennessee guy in the history of their football, uh, in in one game." And I'm and I'm thinking, well, okay, I don't know what you're talking about. So the Milton. Just I did not know that you had the record for most touchdowns accounted for in one game in the history of Tennessee football. I did not know that. And and every Any time other. Chuck every time Chuck sends me something in reference to you, it's either going to be a pick or you know bad things. It's, it's you know you know the 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 deal against Vanderbilt is still one of the greatest stories ever. All these years later, but. Did, were you number one? Were you aware of that? Number two, no. Did, and, and number two, that's I thought it was pretty cool that, that the kid yeah. was able to, to able to do that. Well, I, yeah, six, SEC, six. you know the SEC Nation or SEC Network, whatever, were Dory, and they were showing the highlights, and he said he chi- he he tied the fabulous Jonathan Crompton, and I, <laughs> finally. They give the kids some love. Because you know I mean? they finally got their head out of their ass. Okay. I sent you the text. I mean, hey, listen, I, I'm 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 old and ornery now. I'll just I'll just shoot it like it is. So, so okay. anyway, anyway, that's not I didn't mean for that part to happen. That's not what I was asking. So uh anyway, that was uh yeah, yeah so, no, I, that was I mean he played I mean, honestly, played lights out for the three quarters. I just – Tennessee's offense just hurts to watch from a quarterback perspective because there's zero reads. I'm trying to be politically correct here. And you have to stare down your receiver because they have a four-way go on every route. It's so hard to watch because the quarterback's put in such a vulnerable position at all times. And le- unless you just say screw it, tuck it and run, every play, and, that's, and that's what. But that's what made Hooker really good is he would he would give up on the play a little early in the pass game because he he was he was pretty pretty darn mobile. Um, but and I then in you- turn, it helped down the road in the pass game. But they're just, I mean, people try to blame Milton for this and this, and he just sits there and. He, he doesn't move. I'm like, yeah, because that's what he's taught to do. That's I, I know you like right. Joe. I know you're. You, I know you like Joe. The way he plays. It's just. It's hard to. It's hard to watch, and it's not him. It's just hard to watch how they're taught. That's all. Well, that was kind of blunt. <laughs> well, me, I'm not being. And listen, I'm not being rude about it. But and it's not. And last year, the reason why it worked. Is you had a Jalen Hyatt that ran a four three forty, and could completely run by a DB, just go. So it makes it a little easier because if you go back and watch the tape of last year, Hendon was able to throw the ball, knowing Jalen was going to run by the guy, and he would throw it before he ran by him. Joe didn't have that luxury this year with the receivers not being able to run by them. So he's going, ooh, and you can tell he's going, <laughs> I don't know which one they're going to pick. Are they going to stop? They're going to go. They're going to break in. They're going to break out. Uh, Hendon no. had the advantage because Jalen was like, throw the hand up. I'm gone. That was the difference in, in this system. You've got to have a burner that can run a 4 3 40 and run by somebody to help your quarterback. We didn't have that this year. So, and this is what I was trying to tell everybody on the halftime postgame show. No matter who was playing quarterback. It was going to be the same outcome because we didn't have the receivers that could run by them. So you had to wait. And if they could, if they didn't get open, ain't nothing you can do about that. If they're not open, you can't throw it. That's what was hard to watch this year. Okay. Now, 
uh, tonight, tonight, pick your national champion. And it's subject to change as we go forward. But as we sit here on the last day of November, if you say this team is going to be the national champion, who is it? Chuck, I'll let you go first. Michigan. Who said that? Dad? Chuck. Chuck said oh, that. Chuck did? And I, I, I'm going to, right now, if you'd asked me <clears> a month ago, I always go Michigan, and I've said it all year. But I think right now, on the 30th of November, I think Georgia is just a different level. Just, man, they got they, kids that, that make plays on both sides of the football. They do. Um, but 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 I'm got still gonna, barely over Michigan right now. Now that's subject to change. But I'm just talking about I'm a, today. I'm, I'm going I'm, Michigan, and the reason why I'm gonna go Michigan. It would have been a resounding Michigan if that um, uh, guard Zach. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Rent. Yeah, their, their guard. Yeah. If his if he didn't break his leg, then it would be a no brainer. And the reason why is because Michigan's got the best two-headed horse in the backfield in the run back and the as their running backs. If they need to milk the clock, good luck. If they want to throw the if they got to go to two-minute drill, hey, they're okay. But if they get a lead, you're done. They can run the ball with the best of them. Let me let me just chime in here with this on this Zach Zenter. Uh, injury. Venter, it, that's it. I was wanted. I right. thought it was Renter. It, it was devastating. You know the good thing about that injury? He can fall back on education. He goes class. Yeah, but the thing is, he's still no. He's still going to get drafted. He he's going to be an All American guard. He'll he'll be fine. May not, and if he does, and it doesn't work out, he can go. He goes to class. But how, how do I you know? know? Good you know, football. They, that years ago when you were a little tight Jonathan they put up the guy's picture and it would be Jonathan Crompton finance and economics you know major I mean they would put that stuff up and now they stopped doing that about what is their major we don't want to tell them what they're doing is what yeah well, yeah. well that and kind I of think this let me can, can I can I interrupt for a second with what yeah. you said and I don't know how to do this hold on let me see if you if you I just know if you look behind me and you see that orange jersey, right? And there's a there's a it's a torch. Thing, there's a torch on there. Okay, what's that torch mean, Jonathan? That's for academic honor roll. And, uh, and, look at you, a. But but what I'm saying is that goes back to exactly what you were just saying, Chucky. Right. Yeah, you know, but uh, yes, but here's the thing though the, on that. This is where today's game's different. And um, Nebraska, what's his name? Matt Rule. He ain't wrong. And so the hard part is he goes, hey, guys, <laughs> y'all want me to go get a quarterback in the portal? A decent quarterback now costs a million. A good one costs two million. It is what it is. That's today's game. So if you're paying an 18-year-old kid $2 million and they're making more than their offensive coordinator, are they going to go to class? <laughs> no, 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 you see what I'm saying? That, but that is today's game that we live in, right, wrong, and different. Wrong. No, it, it, it has nothing to do with it. Right, wrong, and different. Because I'm going to say right for the fact of Jimbo Fisher sucks at his job and gets paid $77 million. He gets paid $26,301 per day for seven years. That ain't right. He sucked. He broke the rules, too. So that ain't right. But if they get that, then I'm not mad at the players getting it. Now, should they morally say, I need to go to class? Yeah, 100%, because you still got to be eligible. But the reality is, I'm not mad at that because the coaches can literally be paid to be bad at their job. Like, that's the definition of being fired. You sucked. Get out of here. Oh, here's $77 million, though. Right? MTSU, Stockstill, I think he's a good dude. I like him. They got rid of him. They gave him five million dollars to go home. That's so. I'm not mad at the players getting paid. 
I think we should have tiered it a little better than they did. I'll say that. But Matt Rule's not wrong. If you want me to get a, a quarterback in the portal, a good one's going to cost us $2 million. It is what it is. But we're not going to get a good quarterback in the portal. Why do you think the dude at Duke's leaving? He ain't stupid. He's better get paid at Auburn or Notre Dame. Probably Notre Dame. Texas a He already committed. Oh, did he? Correct. Yeah. Did, did, am I, yeah, he's at Texas a Riley Leonard? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Then he got even, he got triple paid then. <laughs> You know, and so what I'm saying is I'm not mad at that because if the coaches can do it and you're supposed to go to the school for the school, but you go there because of the coach and they dip out on you, why shouldn't you get paid? That's not right. Like, ask Arian Foster. He went to Philip Fulmer, said either give me $10 to get Taco Bell or I'm a robber because he had no money. But yet he went and rushed for 150 four hours ago. That ain't right. Like, that's the way I look at it from the, the player's perspective. If they're going to make it where the players can't do it, then when the coach gets fired, then their money's done. They're done. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not that's not right. But I guess what I'm getting at is uh, back to the point of not going to class. How are you going to tell an 18-year-old kid, 18 to 22, whatever, you know, really 17 to 23, that if you're making two to $3 million, Hey, man, you really need to go to Math 101. Hey, man, because if they've got a good financial advisor around them, then screw Math 101. I'm not saying it's right because I wouldn't do that. But I'm just saying, I mean, that's the mindset of it is. Right. Why do you think all the – the what was he, the number four or five player in the nation last year, UCLA's quarterback? He's already leaving because he's about to get paid. Why not? It's free agency. Why would he not leave UCLA now? Because he's gonna he's gonna bargain around two to three million dollars. But that's the unfortunately that's the world we live in. So Chuck, yes, you're right. He does have an education to fall back on. But if the kids are smart in today's world, they won't need that education if they're there, if they're there in college, staying eligible for four years, three to five years, whatever that may be, if they're making if they're smart and they hire a manager that can get them NIL deals for goods amount of money to not go buy you a car, not go buy you chains, but invest it then that if they don't make it in the league, that they bought themselves time or they bought themselves a house already where they don't have a mortgage, those things, but they've got to surround themselves with the right people to where they technically could say my education does not matter. Right. No, not every not every player can do that, obviously. Right. You've got to be a premier player to do that. But they, you know, I have said it, Tennessee needs to go after a quarterback in the portal. They do. They need to fork it up. You can't rely on – to me, you can't bank your season on a kid that has thrown 20 passes the whole season in garbage time. He's going to be a really good player. But he's unproven, so we need to go get somebody that can compete. Yeah, they need to open their checkbook. All right. Well, that's kind of deep, Chuck. Deep thoughts by Jonathan Crompton. <laughs> New segment. <laughs> okay. We we can't leave without talking about uh baseball. And the best manager in baseball today. Is, is our guy down in, in Texas, Bochi, And I just read where he kept his whole coaching staff, uh, and that includes uh, uh, Mike Maddox as the pitching coach, which I think he's probably the best pitching coach in baseball. And his brother, Greg, will be there in spring training with him. Uh, but everything, the whole baseball world, as we say every week, revolves around the one guy signing. And I'll and I I have not changed my opinion so far since 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 the All Star game. Otani is going to be a Dodger. Chuck Otani is going to be a Angel. God, not a chance. I can't see that. But he's been. Now I'll give Chuck credit. He's never changed his story on that since the All Star break. He has been adamant since 
June, even before the break. Well, there's two ways you can look at that. I've been wrong since the All-Star break, if when it happens, or I could be right since the All-Star break. But I, I just I think he's he's going to stay in Los Angeles. He's going to be um, an angel for a long time. I just don't. I think he he's too much of a multi generational talent. Not this year. No. Oh, look at the course of his career. He has done things that have not been done in a hundred years. I got like from that. the top to bottom. He needs to go to. A, he, he deserves to go to a contender, and not waste his talent. Mike Trout, same this way. Is the he, second, he needs to go somewhere and not waste his his talent. I'm going to suggest he is a tremendous offensive weapon, but this is his second Tommy John surgery. Second. Oh no, no! I, I think he stays essentially DH from here on out, and you know what I mean. Like I don't think he's on the mound, and unless they go, hey, we're in the World Series and it's Game Seven, and we need an arm, and you're you're really you're really damn good. Um, they got to have mean, the just it, listen. It's just the same thing outside Tommy John. Same thing Babe Ruth did. He left the mound to go right. play outfield and hit. But Jonathan, the he's no longer the pitcher, and you can say all that stuff. And then, well, he's going to be paid fifty million. It's like the Cubs. We talked about this Tuesday. The Cubs said they got to figure out where they're at. If you don't have fifty million, you to figure out where you have. You can't afford Otani. Oh no! Oh, no. I know. I've got two teams. I got an NL and an AL that have the money though. The Tigers, one of them. No. Uh, the San Francisco Giants uh, and the Toronto Blue Jays. That's possible. And the reason, if he goes to Toronto, Dad, I'm sorry, <laughs> but our O's, it ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be pretty at all. <laughs> but, I'm going to punch you in the face. Why, but here, and here's my reasoning why I say both of those. And you know, I'm saying those kind of long shots. I, I still think he ends up as a Dodger, like Dad. But I'm going with – the reason I'm going with the Giants and the Blue Jays is both are high Asian population cities. And I say that because he doesn't speak English. And that's just – it's his comfort zone, and I can't blame him. And so that's the reason why – honestly, if you go back and look, that's the main reason why he chose L.A. when he first came over. So to me, if he's done it once, I think he would do it again. In Toronto, you're playing in perfect weather all the time. And the reason why, it's a dome. Right. If it's summertime, open it up. So you're guaranteed you're guaranteed good weather there. And the only time it's not, obviously, is like New York, Boston, Baltimore, but you're just that's just a few games a year. Well, you're yeah, playing in really good weather in Baltimore. Oh no. <laughs> But th that's just the reason why I think I think oh. that. But I also think San Francisco because he's a, he's essentially a West Coast guy, and they they have a legit chance to make a run if they get one or two pieces. If they if they go if they go, we're going to get all these pieces back from you know two years Tommy John's injuries and all this stuff. But I am not going to go anywhere near uh, the favorites. On our futures bet, Jonathan, you can't be doing this. You're a coach, but your dad, but you can have input. We might slip you a 10 or take you up. <laughs> so, <but laughs> and, <laughs> and your input's valuable, and we will show you the money if we win. Give me a nice cold well, crisp me, dollar bill. Well, let me let me let me let me throw it something else in the pot. Then I believe, and don't the winter meetings start next week? Hey guys, don't the winter meetings start next week? They're coming up soon. I believe that that they've got that the Angels are in a situation where. And now this is now Chuck thinks totally different than me on this. I I don't see any way that Otani goes back to them, and I believe now that they're going to be forced 
to trade Mike Trout. And 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 I think that Trout's going to be either a Philly. He'll be in or, Philly. Or, or a Matt. Or a Tiger. I, uh, um, the reason why I think uh, Philly is no, – notice where he's been watching NFL games lately, in person. Well, that's, his, no, that's where he's from in that I, area. I know he's that. It, I know that, but it, he is. That's where but he lives. also the fact – he want he wants to be there. That's what I'm getting at. He wants to be there. That's his home essentially. I, his, I think I think he's in Philly. I do. Isn't his wife a California girl? Winter meeting no, starts. No, Sunday. it's his high school sweetheart uh, John, right there in New Jersey. Oh, uh, winter meetings are Sunday, starting Sunday in Nashville. And that was and, from and, Bama. And and let me let me say this. Opposites can attract i guess because did yeah. you know chuck did you know you see that helmet behind jonathan yeah and you know what that helmet and that t means to to him well it doesn't stand for physical you know what that t means to him Damn. orange that took a turn orange or what terminator but jonathan's Jonathan's better half, when he came home and, and, and was done with it, with all his football, he met this young lady that went to what high school? Fisca. Fisca. Yep. And, and, so, hey, and, listen. Hey, so, hey, when they, when they get smart <laughs> and they realize that's where the real men are, uh, they come on home. <laughs> it's all simple. I all I know is Tosh was a cheerleader, right? And she yes. came home. Is, 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 is what I'm saying? Sometimes, sometimes you just got to get smart. It's all good. She's the smartest one of them all. She was the student body's favorite cheerleader. I'm just saying. Now, I was never. Not no more. <laughs> <laughs> one nothing. Oh, <laughs> so my God. Hey. Deep thoughts with Jonathan Crompton. So anyway, I said that to go back. I said when he was talking about Trout's wife, she's from New Jersey. There, she gotcha. was in high school with him. Gotcha. Do you, do you guys see him as a Matt or a Philly in twenty four or at the least twenty five? I, I, I think say, he's. I think he's. I Philly. say yes. I think he's a Philly. I think Dump I is planning it already. He just the, his nature. He can spend other people's money like it's going out of style. And for that reason, he's the GM of Philadelphia. I see him as a Philadelphia Philly. I, I do. I really do. 24 this or year. 25? This year. Before the trade deadline. 25. Okay. I, I, All right. Well, here, here's, your, here's your question. Speaking of baseball. All right. What, what does Otani get money-wise? Total. 550, 600, I'm thinking in, 35, 40 huh? a year, 40 a how year much? for a, for how long? Oh, short term. I think, I think honestly, I think he gets a 10 year, 550 to 600. From now from Artie Marino, I buy that, but others want him the whole package and he's not going to be ready in 2024 to do hey, this. You're right. Season. He won't. It, you're you're right, but the and the only reason why I think he gets like Dad said five fifty to six is if you if you look at it, he as a hitter. Now he hasn't had a chance to prove in the playoffs because he's been with the Angels, right? But before Bryce Harper went to Phillies, he's better than Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper got four hundred. Let, let me say, let point. me say this though. Let me say this, that, that, that it's never talked about. But when he was in Japan, before he came stateside, yes, he was their best pitcher. Yes, he was the best hitter. But do you realize he was the best outfielder? Yes, uh, he's, our, he's, today, he's our version of Babe Ruth. He, he can play. I, you know, he, he, he can look at him and go, no, I can't pitch for 24. But when he starts throwing and is able to throw, they can put him in the outfield. That's what, that's what I'm exactly. saying. I don't know. If he, I don't know if he ever pitches again. I don't. For the simple fact of, if you want to give him a long term deal, 
put him in the outfield and let him be let him be your one, two, three, or four hitter, depending on where you want to put him, and say, go be that dude. 162 games playing out in the field. It, Mike Trout can tell you this. Uh, you're going to break down and have injuries. But, you, but here's the thing. You don't have to anymore. You're the no, big, but poppy, big poppy won his last like eight years and never played one game in the field. I know, but I'm I'm re, uh, report I'm reacting to what you said. He could go yeah. out. You know. Oh, yeah, and I'm just I'm just saying. But it's his full time position. Well, and you know, big, need big Poppy time. had other things going on too. Hey. Also true. Also true. But I'm just saying, like he <laughs> he he can be your everyday outfielder, but he can also go. Oh, I'm gonna. Hey, he needs a rest. Let's give him three weeks as a DH, and he's still gonna go bat 500. I think you know sees all the offers. And sits down with them last and makes the offer, like you're saying or David's saying, and I think Artie seals it as a because uh, he's got the money. Wait. And Bellinger, I I see Bellinger is maybe a Yankee, which I, I hope not, but they've got the money to pay him. And Be- in 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 the, and we've had this debate since 2019, Chuck, you and I. Bellinger's issue was he was hurt, and, right. and he got hurt. The, when he got hurt, was the stupid thing celebrating. Right. So, so those two years that he was a one ninety seven hitter, he literally was playing with one arm. Last year, out in the outfield, he's as good an outfielder as anybody playing. When they right. put him at first base, he's a Gold Glove first baseman. Right. He hit over three hundred. He hit like three teens. And he started to get his power back. Somebody's going to give him big money. Do you? Where do you guys see him? I'm thinking that the Yankees are going full board. I, I, go Detroit. But you, you say are. everybody's going to Detroit. So, place. <laughs> um, this is what is the problem with Bellinger. Always said he is. But this head, if things go south, this head gets in his way. And it's almost childlike when you're watching him play. I don't wish him bad things. Oh, no. I wouldn't want him in being facetious. Yeah. I, I see him playing in Baltimore. They, I, they don't have the money. <laughs> see, Nick, you're, you're right. They don't. The to me, I see the Yankees going after anybody they can. Ah, you what? Couple uh, options to buy waste management stock, and you got a deal right there. There you go. Um, I think I see the Yankees going after anybody they can <clears throat> because Boone's got to save his job, right? Do you want to go come, if they don't come out hot? Boone's gone before the all star break today. Do you want to go play in New York? No, I don't know, but but I'm not a Yankee fan though. Like I don't like the Yankees, so that yeah. I have a bias going no. Um, but but now when he says well, New York, money talks. But but he says New York. The Mets, even though they they had all the injuries and, and things did not turn out well, this guy's going to spend the money. He's going to spend money, but your team's going to suck. But money talks, so you know. It is what it is. I, I say no just because I don't like them but then again if i'm a major league baseball player then every team's up for grabs you know what i mean right i will give you that new york yankees new york mets boston red sox was the worst finish amongst those three teams they were also and think about it they're also three very ruthless fan bases right excellent excellent point um, for that one. Well, I mean, because that because that does play a toll. But but they didn't throw snowballs at Santa Claus like the one fan base. That's Philadelphia. That's it, brother. Yeah. And but that, that, and Santa Claus left on a stretcher. <laughs> okay, so who who wins? Elmo? R- Rudolph Rudolph went down. We got a big game going here. What's the score? Jonathan. Elma. And Cortland stayed at Elma. What's the score? 34 21. 
how much? 34-21. Oh, okay. You, you're my man. David? Uh, 28-24. Ooh, that's too close for me now. I was having a bad day, so I, I might have to say the same thing, though. <laughs> that's a good foot. You, you, I have, I've, I've done a little bit of research. And they're a pretty darn good football team. They're 12 and 1. Yes, they are. And they're really, really a pretty darn good football team. So we will see. Uh, I got to uh, tell you, George Gulliver, who lives down in Mooresville now, uh, was a lineman. And all our techs, well, there's about eight guys on our text group for Alma College. And Gulliver called, uh, Gulliver called uh, Coach Couch and said, You need to call feeds. He's got like 10 bona fide D3 All-Americans you need to go after and ask him about the quarterback. And I said, no, you didn't. He said, yes, I did. You told me about him. I said, oh, man. Well, so I'm passing that on. So when he's done with this, and hopefully we can talk with him after on Friday, December 15th, ESPN will be broadcasting it. Maybe we can just say, here's these kids. Let's get this party started. Because I got a guy in Arkansas who will help us uh, help us in certain ways. <laughs> that story. Tony and Nice. Tony. Oh my God. This. Tony and Nice going down to I think it was McKinney, Texas, to play for the national championship. And he stops at Greg Hatcher's estate in Arkansas. And he's asking him about, do you know about any high school we can practice? And Hatcher looked at him and went, well, I got a football field back here. He had a football with turf back in his backyard. So they practiced at Hatcher's estate on the back 40 or whatever. Jesus. Lord have mercy. All right, guys. We've run a little bit over tonight. Uh, a lot of good football Saturday. Uh, a lot of good, uh, it starts tomorrow night with uh, uh, Washington and Oregon, uh, and 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 Chuck's uh, kilter. The Scots, the kilts, are playing Saturday at noon. Is it noon, Chuck? Yes. And uh, and then we've got all the other games uh, on Championship Saturday, and we'll know. I get, they do they announce the playoff stuff on Saturday night after the games. It doesn't yeah. go into Sunday. I mean, the brackets are already set. You know who wants who to play. You just don't know where it's going to be, and it can go as by Sunday. But la last weekend it was six o'clock Saturday. We knew we were hosting Co Cortland State. Yeah. So, all right, guys, we'll be back next week. Really good thing, Jonathan. Uh, you're a little opinionated, son. I, uh, you, you take hey. after your, you take after hey, your. Listen, mom. listen. They ain't opinions. Oh my God! <laughs> All right, Cindy <laughs> Dean. Oh my God! You and oh my Lord. love it. With you and Chuck and John Taylor. What am I gonna do? Hey, I don't know. All right, guys. Have a good week. Everybody, stay warm. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday night. Have a great night. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Later. Good night.